Chapel, my name is Thanos, and I'm here to take over Chapel with my big sword. Um, my name is Iron Man, and I am here if my suit of armor and my lasers and my rockets and my missile guiding systems, but I'm gonna take, I'm gonna stop you with my sword, not all that stuff. You can't stop me, Iron Man. I can't stop Wait a minute, what's that music? Yeah, what is that music? That's Star Wars music, that's not our music. Yeah, that's not good. That's, that's just, they just don't respect us, do they? No, I guess not. Let's go ahead and do our sword fight. All right. Hey everybody, Coach Little here, and I'm really excited about today's lesson. Um, I hope that we can have a fun last chapel Bible lesson while we talk about something I like, that's swords. But not just any sword. I like to talk about um, a very special sword. Have you ever had your Sunday school teacher say, All right, class, it's time for a sword drill. Take out your swords. And you're thinking, I don't have a sword. I don't have uh, a metal-y thing that's pointy. Um, I just have my Bible here. Well, that's the special sword that they're talking about. It might sound like a strange comparison because a sword is sharp and used for battle. Well, the Bible is also sharp. sharp. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. The Bible is also used for battle, but it's not for physical battle. It's for a spiritual battle. The Word of God contains the truth, and the truth can be sharper than any two-edged sword. When people hear the truth... They must make a decision, follow the truth or fight against it. And fighting against the truth can be quite difficult. In the end, it's a losing battle to fight against the truth. John 20, 31 says, But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This verse is telling us that the Bible is written so that that all people can believe in Jesus as the Christ. Um, and when we believe in him, um, we can have life in his name. Ephesians 6, 17 is talking about putting on the whole armor of God. And when it gets to verse 17, it's talking about a very specific part of the armor of God. Paul calls the, calls the Bible the sword of the spirit. Hebrews 4, 12 says, For the word of the, I'm sorry, for the word of God is living and active, Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. How is the verse of God described in this verse? Or how is the word of God described in this verse? It's described as a living, active, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, I've got a sword that I've given to my son. I had this in college. This is my sword. Okay, it's still not a real sword. It's a nerf. It's a nerf sword. It's made. It's a, it's a nerf sword. This is a. It's called a long sword. It's a. It's a long sword. This was used early in the Middle Evil days, um, and it's got two sides. When it says sharper than two edged sword, this sword can be used in battle both ways because it's got two edges on the sword. So I'll put this nerf sword away right here for a second. Uh, that's how the Bible is. It's sharper. These were very, sh the real versions of these were really, really sharp. Um, the Bible says that the Bible, or God, Paul says that the Bible is sharper than any two-edged sword, meaning that it's able to um, change our lives. It's able to really cut through and show us what is true in our lives. And that's what Paul means when he says the Bible is living and active. Um, what does the Bible, what does the word of God do? It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Last verse we're going to take a look at is 2 Timothy. It's a passage of verses. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5 says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge, the living and the dead. And by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. 
that have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit for their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. I love this verse. This verse tells us about how important God's word is and how, it should, how important it should be to all of us. Um, and there's a lot to unpack out of this verse, so we're just going to touch on a few things. First of all, this verse, the question that we ask is, what are we supposed to do with God's word? Why do we have God's word? It's to help train us and, and, and prepare us to be able to go out and preach the good news of the gospel. We just talked about how, how in our last series, we just talked about how um, we were able to become a Christian. And what does it mean? Um, we can't have anything to do with sin. And sin destroyed our relationship with Christ. But because um, God sent, has loved us so much, he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. That's the good news. That's the news we need to share with everybody around us whether it's our family or our neighbors or our friends, they need to hear that good news. And if you became a Christian, it's important for you to take that important news that was to you and go share it with other people. Will some people turn the good news down? Fortunately, yeah, they will. But what are we supposed to do if they turn down the good news? Well, we're supposed to keep the faith and continue doing the work of an evangelist. Well, what's an evangelist? Well, evangelist is someone who shares the word of God with others. It's not a special preacher that goes around in, 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 in RVs or trailers. or it's, it's anybody who can share the gospel. Now, if someone tells you, bring your sword with you, you know what they're talking about now? That's right. For church, at least. That's right. Your Bible. It's the sword of truth because God's word is the truth. We need to know what the Bible says uh, oh, we need to know what the Bible says to know the truth. In John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If we could be set free by, knowledge, uh, by knowing the truth, imagine what sharing the truth with others can do for them. I hope you guys had a great time in our chapel times. I know I had fun putting them together, um, and I'm so excited about this school year. I hope you guys enjoy your summer break, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you very, very soon. Bye-bye.